This is a true story. It happened to my family and involved my firstborn son, who's just a couple of months away from his eighth birthday. He was in second grade at the time. We were living in Tacoma, Washington back then. And I must admit, it had changed my life forever, especially in my role as a mother. It's been 27 years since this happened, but it still haunts me to this day. A little backstory to put these events into perspective. January of 1995 was a traumatic month for our family. My son up to this point had been walking to and from his bus stop. The bus stop was a block and a half away from our house. The walk was a small hilly one down to in the morning and up in the afternoon. During that month of January, an elderly man from the Korean grocery store across the street was brutally murdered. I could see the shop from our bathroom window and we also survived our first earthquake. So you can see that this was a traumatic month. From the start, my son used to traverse in the alleyway that ran between the back of the houses on our street and the back of the houses on the next street. We were so used to this that it had become a commonplace and there was no worry in the world about our son's safety until that fateful day in January 1995. As usual, our day started in the typical fashion. I arose at 6 a.m. to begin preparing our children for school. Our second oldest was the first to leave the house. He was in special education and had to be bused across the city to the west side of Tacoma. Then our oldest son left the house as usual. We kissed goodbye and I watched as he walked through the small housing complex we lived in out of the gate and started down the alleyway. Now my next oldest son, who was four at the time, was ready to go off to preschool while my youngest son at the tender age of three was still home with mommy. After I got son number three off to school, it was a typical day for myself, my husband and our youngest. We lived in a small complex with four small houses, each one with a fenced yard and then another gate that enclosed the small complex. At the time of this incident, my husband and I were managing the property for our landlord and we had recently rented out the house next door to us. The tenant was a sweet old lady with a head full of gray hair and just as nice as she could be. She would be a delight to live next to and she played a key role in what happened this particular afternoon. Now I'm not going to go into detail about my daily routine as that's all irrelevant. What happened next starts in the afternoon. At the usual time that I know my oldest son would be coming home from school. I was busy in the house sending the household chores when I heard a frantic knocking at my front door. I opened it and saw through the screen door that it was my next door neighbor. I don't remember her name now, although I'll never forget her heroic actions that day. I asked her what was wrong because she had a panicked look on her face and she was yelling at me, saying that someone was trying to kidnap my son. She had stepped outside, seen what was happening and then ran to us. I screamed for my husband and we ran out to the front door. And to my horror, a man in white sedan was trying to grab our son and pull him into the vehicle. I was screaming and going ballistic while my husband started running towards the car, screaming, get your hands off my son, I'm going to kill you. And I was screaming, kill him, hon. We were both staring in horror while my son tried to get away. The man kept moving the car a bit and opening his door to try and block our son. Our son's back was now against the fence that surrounded the complex we lived in. At one point, he actually had his hand on our son's arm and was about to pull him in the car when the neighbors heard the commotion and jumped into action. At this point, our neighbors who lived across the alley and were drinking buddies of my husband heard the commotion. Both of them, two brothers, out of respect of their privacy, I'm not giving their names, leaped over the six-foot fence, sprinted around the front of the perp's car, and then one brother swept up our son into his arms and hurriedly brought him back to me, saying, here mom. In the meantime, the man just sat there, stone silent in his car, not moving at all. I stared into his eyes and I can tell you one thing, I had never seen such dark soulless eyes as I did when I stared into this man's black eyes. I shivered because it was like I'm looking into the very eyes of utter darkness, the devil himself. He actually sat there long enough that we were able to get a complete physical description of the man, the vehicle and the license plate. 
My neighbor called the police, of course. Before they arrived, the man finally sped off. I still shudder to this day when I think of what would have happened if my neighbors across the alley hadn't come to our defense. The perp would likely gotten our son into his car and we would have never seen him again. One other thing that upset me was that right before the man left, he pulled out a Polaroid camera and rapidly took a couple shots of our son. That really creeped me out. The police arrived soon thereafter, or should I say, one police officer who looked like he couldn't have been more than 25 or 26 years old, definitely late 20s. At the time, I was only in my early 30s, so he wasn't much younger than myself. He definitely looked as he had just came out of police academy. My advice to all police, don't send a rookie out to investigate child abduction cases or near abduction cases. That young officer eyed me skeptically and just said that I was a hysterical mom. I couldn't believe it. Of course I'm going to be hysterical. Someone tried to abduct my son. I'm sorry, but that should have been handled by an experienced detective. This scared me for life. And for a long time, almost three years, I wouldn't let my son out of my sight and made him hold my hand everywhere we went. Obviously, I went to extremes to protect my other children as well. Of course, he grew up and became irritated with my overprotectiveness as I wouldn't let him out of my sight. He was almost ten and a half years old before he was finally allowed to leave the house and ride his bike down the corner store. At the time, we were no longer living in the house where the abduction attempt happened. As I conclude this, our son is now 35 years old, happily married, and a successful auto mechanic with his own shop and business. We no longer live in Washington state, but we have moved to another state. God bless all of you and take care. It's a dangerous world out there. I'm a female, and this is something that happened to me when I was 14 years old. I went on a lot of bike rides around the neighborhood where I lived. When I did, I would often see an older man walking his dog around a certain area. Normally, I would just ride past him. One day though, I was going a bit slower when I was passing the man and his dog. I was looking at the dog and I said that the dog was beautiful. Then I passed them and kept going. About 30 minutes or so, I was on my way back home and I passed the man's house again. He was outside with his dog still and stood in the road looking at me. He was kind of in my way and was basically stopping me. So I came to a stop on my bike. The man said hi to me and we got to talking. Pretty early on in the conversation, he asked me where my house was and for some reason I told him my street. He then asked me which school I went to and what grade I was in. I told him my school and my grade because I was young and I didn't know any better at the time. The houses in this area had a little bit of land and behind the man's house there was a large wooded area. The man then told me that the wooded area behind his house led to a mall. Spoiler alert, there is no mall in that direction and I knew that. That's when red flags started to raise in my head. I told the man that my mom really wanted me back home and I started heading back to my bike. The man didn't stop me and I was able to get back to my house. When I got home, I told my parents about it. A couple weeks later, I got some chilling news. Apparently, my mom was talking to her friend about what happened. Her friend said that the man was on one of those sex offender websites. So my mom being who she is, saw the man outside when she was on a walk. She confronted him and asked him if he had told me that there was a mall behind his house. Then she told him that he had better not to talk to me ever again. My mom said that the man was just kind of shocked and didn't say anything. To me, that was horrifying. I stayed away from him and his house after that. I live in a neighborhood that's slightly out in the country. It's not in the middle of nowhere, but probably around 40 minutes to the closest major city. The area has some farms and a lot of woods and things like that. Because it's quieter around here and everybody had a little bit more land, there's more wildlife. 
I like to go on walks around my neighborhood because there's a lot of interesting things to see. I usually start at my house and walk along the side of the street since there is no sidewalks around here. I will go for about a half a mile to a mile and then turn around and head back. There are a few quiet streets that lead to the other neighborhoods. I rarely see anybody driving or walking when I go on these walks, occasionally somebody walking a dog or something like that, but usually nothing. There's also a park nearby that's usually pretty quiet, but sometimes I go there then head back. Now to start this story, it was evening and almost sunset. I was working slightly later hours that week than usual. With it being early spring, the sun also set kind of early as well. I walked from my house to the park that was a little less than a mile away. When I was on my way back, I heard a noise in somebody's yard. It was in the space between one house and another, and there was a large amount of room between them. There were a few trees and bushes in that space. It was dark, but it sounded like maybe a large animal behind one of the trees. I stopped and looked. At first, I didn't see anything, but then what I did see shocked me. There was a man looking at me from behind one of the trees. It was really dark, but it appeared as though he was looking back at me. When he saw me, he then ducked behind the tree. This was kind of odd. I didn't think that the man lived there, and I didn't recognize him. Sure, I didn't know all my neighbors. This behavior was just strange, and it didn't seem like he lived there. However, there wasn't much I could do about it, so I kept walking home. Eventually, I made it back and everything was fine. But the very next night, I took another walk at around the same time. Once again, I saw this man, but this time he was in a completely different neighbor's yard. He kind of ducked behind a bush when I started to walk by him. This made me a lot more nervous than I'd been in the previous night. I didn't even really bother to look over and just kept walking home. The man stayed there as I moved past that night, I was able to make it home safely as well. Each night after making it home, I would forget about the man. The very next night, I once again went on a walk after work. I went to the park and this time, when I got to the park, the man was there. There was nobody else at the park, which was typical. It was usually really quiet. The guy was lurking around the edge of the wood that surrounded part of the park. Overall, it was very suspicious. I decided to head back home almost as soon as I saw him. I was also kicking myself for even going on a walk that night, forgetting about the suspicious man lurking around the neighborhood. When I left the park, it only took me about a minute before I heard footsteps behind me. They were way back, but it was a quiet night, so it was very easy to hear. He was probably at least 50 feet behind me, I sort of looked back and noticed him way off in the distance. I tried to ignore it and kept going back home, but I was worried. What if the man followed me all the way back to my house? I also had no clue what he was even doing. Minutes went by and things remained the same. I suppose I could have just called the police, but the man would have noticed. I also had no proof of him doing anything wrong. I also have expected the guy to jump into somebody's yard at any time and lurk around like he had been doing. By the time I finally made it to my street, the guy was still behind me at about the same distance. I walked a little bit faster and was holding back everything within myself to not start sprinting right there. At long last, I reached my driveway. Now, I should mention that I have a really long driveway. I wasn't in the clear yet. The guy was still probably 50 feet behind me. I walked quickly up my driveway and felt relief for a minute, expecting the man to pass by and just keep going down the road. But when I was almost at my front step, I thought I heard him start to enter my driveway area. I got out my keys and unlocked the door as quickly as possible. My hands were shaking in the process, making it harder. I could hear his footsteps gradually getting closer to me as I did. It seemed as they were speeding up as well. Finally, my door was unlocked and I swung it open. 
Once I was inside, I slammed it shut and turned the lock, then I exhaled in relief. No more than five seconds later, I heard the doorknob turn. It wouldn't open though. Now the man was right outside and I was so scared that I ran to the opposite end of the house. A few minutes went by and I listened closely. I returned to the front of the house after not hearing anything for several minutes. When I did, I looked outside and the man was gone. I looked out several other windows but didn't see him. After that night, I took a break from going on walks for a while. I'm not sure who that man was, but I didn't see him again. <laughs>